Now, though, here's a question. How many Nobel Prize winners does it take to change a light bulb? Well, let me tell you, because the answer is three. This year's Nobel Prize for Physics has been awarded to a trio of scientists in Japan and America for the development of low-energy LED lighting. The three were honoured for developing the technology to create blue LEDs, paving the way for light sources that use up to 20 times less energy than normal household light bulbs. Well, with me now is our science correspondent, Jonathan Webb. And, uh, Jonathan, start off, tell us what these three actually did. Well, as you say, the blue LED was the really key step. We'd actually had red and green LEDs since the 60s, and some, for some three decades, it was a real stumbling block for researchers in the area to actually make an LED that produced that higher energy wavelength of light, the blue light, which is what we need to actually start producing white light. And once you've got that, then you can make white LEDs, which we need for all of our display screens, but also we can make the next generation of light bulbs, which, as you say, can cut our energy costs and our carbon emissions really significantly. I'll come on to all of that, but, I mean, these have been around for 20 years, but it's unlocked everything, exactly as you say, because if you, you talked about the, the, the studio here and the screens. I mean, all of these screens have thousands of LEDs uh, in them, and that's why we can change colour. You just flick a button and you can go to red, and then uh, very, very quickly, anything you like, any colour you can manufacture, green, and then, of course, the development that we are talking about, the blue LED. Now, that was absolutely crucial because in terms of being able to get to any colour, to, colour it's that mix, isn't it? Red, green, you add blue, and that's a eureka moment. Exactly. That's where the white comes from. For everyone who studied their physics, if we put together physically the red, green and blue wavelengths, we end up with white light, which our eyes can see and which lights up our environment. And big companies, I mean, they looked at this and looked at it and failed and failed. Why was it so difficult? Well, it's all about the, the chemicals that are involved. So an LED effectively is a, a sort of a sandwich of semiconductor materials. Now, depending on what those materials are, you, you apply a current to it and it directly emits light. It doesn't emit any heat, it's just light, and that's why they're so efficient. But if the materials are different, then you get a different wavelength of light. So we had the red and the green ones much earlier on, but finding the right material to create that really high-energy blue wavelength of light was a, a real problem. And the Nobel Committee talked about just their perseverance, these three. How did they do it? How did they unlock this puzzle? Well, the key material is something called gallium nitride, and that had been proposed for a while. People knew that that was going to be one useful idea for maybe making a blue LED, but people couldn't make big enough crystals of the stuff. So it was these three Japanese scientists who were working in two different labs on trying to make bigger and bigger crystals. And they came up with a number of different tricks, including using a, a substrate that had sapphire in it to help expand those crystals and eventually delivered the current to their, to their semiconductors and actually produced the blue light, which was their eureka moment. And we keep talking about sort of energy savings and the efficiency. I mean, how much more efficient are they? Well, people have calculated that if we were to use the next generation of LED lights rather than old-fashioned uh, incandescent light bulbs, w in, if we used them as much as we could in every possible situation, we'd cut the 20% of our energy that we use worldwide on lighting down to just 4%. So there really is a lot of gains to be made. We were just looking at those three scientists. I mean, the Nobel Committee spoke of the usefulness of the invention, something that has delivered the greatest benefit to mankind in terms of a criteria well you couldn't get anything that fits more perfectly could you no no it's a it's a really interesting choice and something that we can all see in the technology around us and in that way goes right back to what alfred noble wanted when he set up the prizes in his will which is technology that that transforms you know the the way forward for humanity and where else does it go the, the technology? Yeah. Well, if we can uh, make the next generation of, of light sources, as I say, it's not just offices and homes in the Western world, but in the developing world where uh, people aren't necessarily on electrical grids, there's, much, there's a lot of potential for improving people's quality of life by giving them light sources which can run on movement-generated power or on solar power. Jonathan, absolutely fascinating. Thanks very much. Uh, do stay with us. We'll have more on Ebola, that Pentagon briefing still going on. And the latest from Kobani, we heard right from the town itself, the ferocity of the fighting there. Plenty more. Don't go away.